All right, this is a little video on how to play America Bomber, Evil Queen of the Skies, version 1.2 beta. So start off the turn. I've already uh, done three missions just because I want to do a fourth mission to show you what happens at the end of the month. So we'll uh, roll for our raid target. 3-1 is Merck and Company in New Jersey. So we'll write that which is a zone five target. So basically zone five is includes New Jersey, New York, Boston, that area. Zone six is more the heartland. So we're gonna take off, I'll move the counter to bomber counter to zone one. Now that we've got the uh, target, we will Start rolling for interception. So basically that uses the B1 chart. You roll in each zone. Zone 1, there is no interception roll just because you're just taking off. So we advance to zone 2 and roll a 7, which is two P-80 shooting stars. However, that is a land-based aircraft and we're still at sea, so there's no, no encounter. Moving on to zone 3. Seven, uh, same event. Very good. And notice, had we gotten carrier planes in zones uh, two, three, or four, uh, we are allowed, uh, in three and four, we are allowed to have some fighter escorts to uh, fighter cover to drive them away. And basically you roll for friendly fighter cover here on the B2 chart. There's a little box that says you either drive some of them away or all of them, depending on how many show up. But no contact so far, so that's fine. All right, moving right along to zone four. And we will roll again to see what's going on. Seven, I am a good, <laughs> you know, when I do this by myself, it's nonstop carrier planes. But again, uh, land-based aircraft, and we're over the ocean, so we're good. Okay, zone five, we have just arrived in the target zone. So target zone's a little different because we're going to roll for interception, then we roll for anti-aircraft fire, we bomb, then we roll again for anti-aircraft fire, and then we turn around and get the hell out of Dodge. So... Let's roll for our uh, encounter. Unfortunately, we're aircraft of either flavor can hit us in zone five, carrier-based or land-based. And I rolled an eight, no contact, of course, because I'm making a video and I can't <laughs> get the rolls I want to illustrate points. All right, uh, no contact. So now it is time to roll for an aircraft fire. Now, um, unlike Queen of the Skies, where you roll to hit. Uh, basically, the anti-aircraft is firing. So what this roll represents really is, is how accurate is it going to be, how close to your aircraft. And so you've got to uh, try to minimize it. So what we're going to do is the anti-aircraft fire on B3. We roll one dice, and I rolled a three, which means we have medium anti-aircraft, medium intensity. So maybe you got close to two batteries. Um, this is the Stratosphere gun, the 90, uh, 120 millimeter that went up to 60,000 feet that they developed basically at the end of World War II. It would have been a serious threat to us, especially if there's lots of them. So uh, medium and aircraft gives us a light, gives us a minus two DRM, but medium gives us a minus one DRM. Uh, heavy just is straight up on the chart. So we're going to roll 2D6 for the amount of damage, uh, amount of hits we take but that's minus one. However, I'm gonna fire both of my uh, chaff dispensers, so that gives me minus four more, two each, and I'm also gonna utilize, of course, my, my, jam my AA jammer is active. It hasn't been damaged on the way in, thank God. So that's two also, so it's two, four, six, and medium makes it, it's minus seven to the roll. So basically, I have to roll pretty high to even take any damage. The AA is shooting, but I rolled exactly a 7. So 7 minus 7 is 0. No damage from anti-aircraft. All right, time to bomb. 
Uh, each of the four bombers, I like the ME364. It doesn't have as much defense, but it does uh, have a pretty decent bomb load of 13 rating. Um, the um, Falk Wolf 300 only has an 8. And what the bigger your bomb load, the less of a um, die roll modifier you have when you drop. So uh, we'll drop the bombs. The bomb run, we have to see if it's on or off target. And if, ah, on target, I am a good player. Bomb load DRM at a rating of 13 gives us a zero. So it's straight up on the chart. So we will bombs away, baby. And 10 is a pretty decent roll. 50% damage to the Merc factory in New Jersey. And that is a successful mission. Yahoo. So 50% success. Life is good. All right, so we're going to turn this bad boy around. And now we are coming home. And once again, we get to roll on the, let me scoot this down, and our aircraft chart. Uh, how, how bad is it? It is heavy. Oh, goody. Okay, so <clears throat> that is uh, not good for us. I'm going to fire all my remaining chaff. Um, which gives me a minus four. It's heavy, so nothing there. The jammer is still active. So I get minus six to the die roll. And I exactly rolled a six. So this is a milk run so far. Uh, so that was good. All right. So now we are getting the hell out of Dodge. That was uh, the last on aircraft fire as we feet wet. And we're headed back to the Azores. <laughs> So now we are back to uh, trying to escape completely unscathed. Uh, we are now in zone four, going home. Notice there is a change from B-17 Queen of the Skies in that um, uh, you, don't, you don't roll twice for interception in the target zone. You do roll twice for the flak. So it's interception, flak, or an aircraft, bomb, an aircraft because you're leaving, and then you roll again in the next zone as you go for interception. Uh, I did. I tried to simplify a lot of the combat routines, um, and hopefully we'll get to an aircraft. We will. I'll, I'll force the die roll if I have to in the last zone. So anyway, zone four, going home. Ten. There we go. Two F eight F Bearcats. All right. So it is time to bust out the F eight Fs. Bring this sheet down a little further. Um, all right. So these are the uh, 50 cal uh, versions, actually. So they're not. They are not quite as good as uh, the F7Fs or anything else, really. They're minus one random hit. Um, so let's see where we go. First thing we do is we figure out where they arrive from. So we roll a 10-sider for their arrival. So the first one, 6 means high. So 1, 2 is low, 3, 4 is level, 5, 6 is high. So it's coming in high from area 7. So that's actually not so good. I actually made these nifty little, I glued a bunch of uh, blanks together for altitude markers. So this guy's coming in high from seven. Uh, and his wingman is coming in high from area one. Oh, goody. So, now the way, uh, way the combat works is uh, we get to shoot first, unless something horrible happens, like our air search radar is knocked out or... Um, a random event, but we don't. So we're gonna shoot first. So, um, yeah, right. I think the, no obviously the nose guns are gonna shoot at this guy and the top turret and the tail, both gonna go against this guy. 
Now, it's the same either way. They hit uh, in the front. He hits me on a six. I hit him on a six. In the butt, it's four, five, six to hit. So I'm going to fire twice. Uh, top turret's purple. Two hits. All right, this guy is not surviving this. Um, and we come over. The firepower is listed in each uh, gun position. So tail guns are a six. Top turrets is six. The nose guns are only a three. But so they're firing on the six chart, which firepower six is one, two, three is damage, four, five, six is dead. Uh, purple for the. Uh, okay, top turret rolls a miss with the tail, but the top turret, uh, well, damaged him, but the six is a destroyed. So actually, the. I'll write that down. F8F goes to the top. It's important to track who gets the kills because then eventually these guys. Uh, will become you give a status to your gunners and then that gives them a one just like in B-17 alright so uh, knocked him out he's gone hate to be him alright on this guy in the front the nose guns will shoot they'll just be purple I'll just roll the die for the fighter as well uh, everybody misses so he misses me I miss him he goes away And that resolves that. Now, you notice I'm not expending ammunition. Um, basically, I determined in, after a lot of testing that I never really came close to expending all the ammunition. So it became somewhat of a um, waste of time. <laughs> you know, for not... So, I mean, more complexity does not necessarily equate to more realism, as I like to say. So basically... Uh, there is ammo ratings for each gun position on all the bombers. There's an optional rule. If you want to track it, theoretically, you could run out. You know, So that's an optional rule if you want to get into ammo tracking. But 95% of the time or 98% of the time, it doesn't matter. So I just said, let's just dispense with it and make, make the system be cleaner. Uh, cleaner is better, So, in my opinion, uh, for something that you want to be highly playable. All right, so enough of those jokers. They're gone. No damage to us. We go and move on to zone three. All right, zone three. <laughs> two more. <laughs> okay, two. Well, at least I'm uh, bringing in the carrier planes. I guess that carrier is hounding us. We'll roll for their positions. Okay, so this is a nine. This is a good example. Uh, the altitude roll doesn't matter because when you roll a 9 or a 10 you get a vertical climb or a vertical dive. So this guy is vertically climbing at us and uh, believe it or not he's gonna I think I'm gonna well we'll see if he hits or not. Uh, the other joker is coming in from uh, low uh, area 6 uh, the tail well that's not good okay so they're coming at me from below Makes sense. They're chasing me. Um, see who can hit who. The vertical climb. My ventral, my ventral turret can hit him or shoot at him anyway. So that's going to be there. Nose guns are useless. Top turrets useless. Throw two tail guns can actually shoot at this guy. So that's good. All right. So let's do the tail guns versus the big guy in the back. Tail guns are purple. Uh, everybody misses. All right. Well, he does go away. <clears throat> and now the vertical climb, which is hits on a five or a six for both of us. So, uh, great. He hits me. I miss him. Uh, fortunately, on a vertical climb, is one round only. So the fighter actually does a package. It's kind of like a walking hits used to be. Uh, one r random wing hit, airframe, crew, bomb bay, electronics, you know, random, random. So now we get to bring over the damage chart and start whacking. So first things first, random wing port. So I take a port wing hit. I roll two dice, seven. That is minor damage, ignored. Yay. Uh, now we get an airframe hit. Well, that's just an airframe hit. It's just an airframe hit. I can take eight of those, no big deal. 
Next hit is a uh, crew hit. Well, that sucks. Um, crew injury, we we'll just roll two dice and see who sucks it up, the bullet. Five is the electronics warfare officer. That would be bad on the way in because he helps run the jammer, but he's uh, seriously wounded. So the EW officer... Takes one for the team. Next. The uh, bomb bay. Well, actually this is okay because the bombs are gone. So, you know what? I'll take this. Six, bomb bay hit. Uh, minor damage, don't even care. All right. Next hit is uh, electronics. Uh, well, which could be significant. Uh, 10 on the electronics chart. Is my FUG 245 air search radar. This is bad. Well, it would be bad if we were inbound. It's still not good. But uh, so we knocked out the uh, air search radar. So what this means is flip on the side and you see what the actual meanings of all the damage is. In this case, if hit, which it is, fighters fire first at long range. So they actually get in the first wax now uh, instead of me getting in the first wax. Because uh, my air search radar is gone. All right, so that's bad, uh, but not fatal. Well, no big deal. I'll survive it, I think. Uh, and one random. So we actually just roll. Now we roll for a random hit. Whenever you get uh, hits uh, from a fighter, a normal fighter will do damage. It does like one d6 worth of ra random hits, and these are all up here rather than the walking hits that we just did. But we now we get one random, so that is a 45. Four, five, starboard wing takes a hit. Yeah, watch this runaway fuel tank explosion. That, that would be a glorious end to this video. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, where did we roll? Oh, starboard wing. All right, so starboard wing takes a six. Minor damage, we can handle it. All right, so other than a little few holes in the fuselage and a seriously wounded uh, electronics warfare officer, I'd say we got off pretty light. Mm -hmm. Well, and the, and the radar is dead. All right, so he goes away because uh, vertical climb or vertical dive only does uh, one round of combat per the uh, chart here, one round only. Whereas these guys, if they hit it long, they can actually then hit again at medium, and hit again at close if they keep hitting. So they, they keep attacking if they keep hitting, which is not so bad from the front because it's kind of hard to roll that one, but from the butt, they're, they're, they're doing some seriously damage if you get unlucky there. All right, so we, we did all that. He went away after shooting us up a little bit. The other guy missed, so now on to zone two. And I rolled a five. Go back to the interception chart. Five. Two P-80 shooting stars. Again, we're over water. Those are land-based, so that becomes a no, no interception, no effect. <sighs> Pardon me. And now, uh, go to zone one. We don't do anything. And now we roll for landing weather. Uh, I just assume that being the aggressor, you get to choose when you take off. So they're not going they're not going to take off in socked in or weather that's so bad that it's horrible. So I don't bother rolling for takeoff. However, you know, things may it's a long flight <laughs> and weather may change by the time they come back. So that's what we're gonna do. Ten cider always for weather. One through seven is good. In this case we rolled a one, weather's golden. Don't even need to roll. Because on the landing chart, uh, I mean, safe up to a 14. <laughs> it's kind of hard to roll 14 on two dice. Basically, you got to be pretty shot up before landing becomes an issue. Uh, bad weather, engines hit, and they have a lot of engines, by the way, that, that can get hit. Uh, and so we've landed, and that is the end of our mission. All right, so we have another successful mission that... Puts me out to my uh, third successful mission. Uh, but now, that was the last mission of 
April 1947, so now we go into the end of the month routine. And basically what that is, is we take the dress-up doll, so, so to speak. Where am I? Captain's rank there, Hauptmann. Got the EK1, or EK2 rather. Uh, so what we have to do now is decide where to research. Now this is the first month, so I haven't put anything anywhere. Uh, in this case, I'm going to add a point towards. I want to hurt things, so I'm going to. I'm going to add one of my bombing results. And so basically, now that I've done that, now I roll one d6 for each area that has a value greater than zero. As the months go by, you can either pump up the area you're trying to research, or you can spread them out and, and research multiple areas at the same time. But again, the probability, you know, do you want to focus your research or do you want to try to get lucky and have a whole bunch of ones out here? But I'm going to go for this and then I'm going to roll. And of course I didn't get it, but next month I get to roll a one for that uh, to get that uh, advance, uh, technological advance. And if I do get the advance, I put my nifty little cool advanced achieved marker there, and there we are. Uh, but that's that's a mission. Uh, as time goes by, you get the uh, Ju three ninety and the uh, TA four hundred. You get more advanced bombers to choose from, and um, and hopefully your research uh, bears fruit. <clears throat> On the American side, the fighters do get nastier. So this is for the first three months, second three months, you know, the whole game's a year. Uh, but you start start getting FJ-1 Furies, <laughs> which is uh, better than the Bearcats. And then you work your way up to Tiger Cats. And on the uh, land-based side, they start getting Sabres, uh, F-86 Sabres. A little bit early probably on those, but, you know, it is an alternate history fantasy game. So uh, forgive me for that. Uh, but yeah, so it, the uh, contacts get a whole lot nastier. Uh, on your mission chart, you eventually get to the point where you're dropping atomic bombs on Boston, Chicago, New York, or Philadelphia, depending on what you roll. And uh, dropping atomic weapons gives you a... Uh, uh, benefit, big benefit for uh, victory conditions at the end of the game. But uh, that's basically how to run a mission. Uh, it's reasonably simple by intent. Uh, again, it's just a crazy idea to start off as kind of a joke. And then I said, hey, you know what? We can make a game here. And, um, you know, yeah, it's a fantasy, but what the heck? It's uh, it's fun to be the bad guys once in a while. Um and that's that's basically how to play. Hopefully, we'll uh, we'll get this thing published for real someday. But uh, hope you enjoy the video and uh, check us out on the Solitaire War Games group on Facebook.